Welcome back to Web API Tutorials. I am Venkat. In the last video, we have seen how to install SQL Server and SQL Server Management Studio. And also, we have learned about SQL Server Connection String. In this video, we will be generating database and tables using Entity Framework Code First approach. As part of Entity Framework Code First approach, so we have built two things in the earlier videos. So we have created student entity class. We have created student entity class. In this student entity class, you can see we have marked this particular ID column as a primary key and it is auto generated identity column. Okay, so we have created the entity class and we have created the db context class also okay inside this db context class we have created one db set with the name students along with these two we need to do two more steps for that let us open the program.cs file we need to add sql server options to the services here i want to add sql server to the services builder dot services dot add db context so what is our context file name so our context file name is this college db context so add the context file name and inside this options here i have just added db context service to our application inside this we need to say which db we are using options dot use sql server i want to use sql server okay so for this we need to pass the sql server connection string so here we can get the connection string from so here we can actually put the connection string like this so this connection string we have discussed in the previous video what is the connection string so we can get it from server explorer properties and copy this and paste it here that's the connection string but we wanted to generate the new db we don't want to use the existing demo db right so we want to use our own db so college app db college app db so that's the db we wanted to generate so if you give the new name if the db doesn't exist with the name it will create the db with this name okay so that's why i have given the new name so you can see data source is an ahant world and initial catalog nothing but database name so integrated security because we are using windows authentication server certificate trust this is the connection string we have used okay this is not the best practice hard coding the connection string is not the best practice i'll show you how to add this connection string from the configuration file okay so i'll show you that one minute later so now let's go to the college db context here we need to pass the connection string to the base class db context okay so for that create the constructor ctor tab created the constructor for us and here db context options so db context options for this db context so we will get the db context options here and we need to pass these options to base class base of options okay there is a typo okay so what i did here i have simply created constructor for this i have simply created constructor for this class context class so in this constructor we will receive the sql server connection related details okay we are passing those details as is to the base class entity framework base class okay so how we can pass parameter to base class using the base keyword 
okay this is the second step okay so we are done with the two steps but we thought of adding it from the configuration right so if you want to add it from the configuration copy that and go to so there is a app settings.json file double click it so it will be opened here we have discussed all these in the earlier videos okay come down and comma enter so the moment you put double quotes the moment you put double quotes you can see so system is showing connection strings that means connection strings is predefined okay so predefined means you will have the helper class to read this okay if it is not predefined you have to read it as a section there won't be helper class or method provided so as it is showing it is a predefined so that we will get the helper method so that's the connection strings object so inside that connection strings object i want to give the key colon value okay this is the key and this is the value so in the place of value i want to give the connection string this is the connection string we have just used okay what is the key i want to use college app db connection so that's the key i want to use okay so we have added the connection string to the configuration file so once we added this to the configuration file so we need to read it from here so i'm removing this and here how we can read that from configuration file so builder dot configuration dot get connection string i was talking about uh, the helper method right so this is the helper method provided by default so here what we need to pass we need to pass this connection string key okay that's the connection string key now we are reading that key from the configuration so we avoided hard coding values okay so now we have completed writing the code for code first approach so what we did we have added one entity class and we have added a db context so after adding these two we have added entity framework service to the web api application in program.cs okay so once you done this now it is the time to generate the database and the tables okay so how we can generate the database and tables there is a process for that as part of entity frameworks we have created db context and class and a db set and we have added the database service to the web api application so once we are ready with the code we need to use migrations option we need to use migration commands to generate the database okay so what are those migration commands as you all know we are ready with the code once the code is ready we need to run the first command first command is add migration so we need to open the package manager console and there we need to run this add migration command so once you run this command it won't generate the database or database tables so it will create the intermediate migration files okay, it will create migration files in the same code in the same project in the web api same project so once the migration files are generated we need to run one more command that is update database this update database first checks for the database available or not so if the database is not available it will create the database first then it will start migrating the tables or table data anything once you execute update database command the database will be created and tables will be created data will be added if there is any this is the process to generate the database or database tables using entity framework migration okay let's do this so note when i was writing this code so these usings got added please note that okay so let us go to the package manager console let us open the package manager console go to view other windows and package manager console so 
make sure that you have selected the right project so if there are multiple projects under your solution you need to select the correct project to run these commands so i want to run this command on top of this one college app project so what is the migration command migration command is this one so you can see this is the microsoft documentation so the command here is add migration and your migration name okay so add space migration paste it so that's the command and with that command you need to give the comment or message initial db setup so that's my message i'm pressing enter build started build succeeded migration is succeeded so you can see the migration files got generated this is the message we have given initial db setup and this is the migration file so you can see in the migration file you can see two things up and down up is this up method will be used when you are updating the migration so updating the migration meaning running these scripts on top of database okay so you can see this you can see migration tool clearly created uh, create the table with students name and these are the columns data types and all you can see so if if something goes wrong it will execute this down method so that this students table will be dropped okay so these files will be added to a folder so you can see there is a new folder added migrations okay so in this migrations folder all the new migrations will be added in this folder okay so let's create the other one let me open the database also here so let me put the database so i have put database and visual studio side by side so i am refreshing the databases so there is only demo db and now i am executing the second command this is the first command we have executed and second command is this update database so if you run this command it will run the migration files on this particular db server so i'm pressing enter build started build succeeded it started creating all that so let us refresh this database so you can see there is a database created with college app tb where we have given that name so we have given that name in the connection string so we have given that college app db and what is the table name it is created so you can see there are two tables created so one is students table so you can see there are there is a id column added and you can notice that this id column is a primary key and all the other columns got added let us open this table there is nothing inside it is empty table because we did not add any data so let me open this migration table entity framework created this table to maintain the migration history we don't need to do anything with it so it has one record for now we ran only one migration the moment you run the migration you can see new rows added into this table and as we discussed this name taken as a database name so you can see students it has created a table with the name students this is how we can generate the database using the entity framework code first approach for more videos like this please like share and subscribe thank you for watching please check the description box for important links